Dead Dealer, and you're watching Shotgun Wrestling Radio. This is the mechanic, Big Beasley, and you are listening to Shotgun Wrestling Radio. This is Rory Fox, your Central Empire Wrestling Champion, and you're watching Shotgun Wrestling Radio. This is Gavin Parker, and you're listening to Shotgun Wrestling Radio. What's up, everybody? It's Leon King here, of course, the baddest of the baddest, and you are now listening to Shotgun Wrestling Radio. I am Eric S. Knight, and I'm a league champion, and we are the chosen prodigal sons, and this is the Shotgun Wrestling Radio Podcast. This is your deathmatch daddy, Bo Guy, and you're watching Shotgun Wrestling Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Brock Anderson, and you are watching Shotgun Wrestling Radio. This is Augustus Draven, and you're watching Shotgun Wrestling Radio. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Shotgun Wrestling Radio. I'm your host, Zach Tagus. We are on the final episode of our Road to Hall of Fame weekend series, as we are just two days away, roughly, until we all get to Waterloo, start our fun-filled Waterloo weekend. I couldn't have anyone else to finish the Road to Hall of Fame series other than the man right here who I actually know because of the Hall of Fame weekend, and he's one half of the Big Big Ace West Briscoe podcast, as well as one-third of the two-count Two Count Comedy Meets Wrestling Podcast slash Twitch TV show. The one and only Mr. Big Ace. Big Ace, my friend. What's going on, buddy? Hey, buddy. How's it going? I'm doing wonderful, my friend. How are you? I'm good, dude. I'm good. I'm, uh... Man, it's funny. You mentioned that, like, we met in Waterloo, right? Yep. We all became buddies. Me, you, and Zigman. Uh... Which then we became buddies. I mean, you guys did over time, and uh, just as I did with a mm-hmm. lot of the talent that are the Iowa indie scene that's always there. And it's really crazy. That's how many years ago that we met down yeah. there. When and you fast forward to this year, yeah, and now now we're both workers. Yeah. <laughs> when 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 do you? For you was your first weekend because I know mine was 2012. Was yours 2013? Because I, I feel think... like it was very soon after I started going that you guys can't started coming down. Yeah, I think it was the year Flair was supposed to be there and then ditched okay. right before. I think it was either that year or the year before that was my first time going. Okay, and okay. like, and I don't like you're in Iowa, so that's pr- I, I'm assuming you've kind of known about that thing. Yeah. Yep. Like I had no clue till we went like two months before is when someone told us about it. And it was literally because we have a friend here in Rochester who has a friend, uh, big Tony. And I wish I could remember his last name right now. Cause I'd give him a better <laughs> shout out. Cause it's funny to this day. Anytime I see TS, what's Tony doing? I'm like, dude, I don't know. He wasn't my friend. I just, we kind of became buddies because of another buddy, but like, so Tony was like, oh, yeah, he got introduced to me. And he's like, yeah, this big thing weekend. So like his buddy who I'm friends with, the uh, ex podcast partner in the old podcast, we all came that first year, you know, that we went down there. And that was, you know, uh, meeting you guys, Shotgun Radio, meeting, you know, just, you know, uh, Mike Vandy, Mike Morgan, or sorry, Malice, uh, James Jeffries, you know, uh, friggin' a- 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 uh, AJ Smooth, um, the big picture, you know, Justin Decent, just like these guys, you know, that are all just part of this this show, Trav and Troy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we met obviously whoever was their big name. That was my first introduction to. Uh, I mean, I obviously knew him, wrestling fan, but like right. that was the first time ever meeting Wes Briscoe, which again, that's another crazy story yeah. is to know that like me and Wes would text throughout the year and stuff, but like we would hang out in Waterloo and then yeah. spawn <laughs> into just, and there was no talk, Zach. There was yeah. never a talk. If anyone's ever wondered this, which I, and I'll be the first to admit this show has been on quite the hiatus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> legitimately, I think we did a live show last year and we're going to do a live show this year. But like in between that, there's been so much stuff, uh, you know, just personal lives, me being busy doing what what I've been doing up here in the Midwest, just like you, Wes at one point tried to start a promotion, ran a show. I was fortunate enough to be there for that and be a part of that show. But it's just so crazy to think that of all places in the world, Waterloo, Iowa is Mm -hmm. when jump started, 
what now became fandom for you and I to yeah. no now we're in the business yeah yeah it's, it's crazy it's, it's wild I mean you and dude like even just you know a few years back you and I got a chance to do commentary on the show I just think about that too like and that was like kind of my first like doing anything for a you know a, a legitimate run indie promotion was mm-hmm. when Troy approached me about me and you doing that uh and it was a blast and then you know turned into i was coming down for most of the ipw shows and if you were there you were hopping on if you weren't there someone else was hopping on uh you know what i mean and it and it and it was it was interesting it was fun it was interesting uh there's a lot more technical that goes into that, you know, to, uh, like technology aspect that goes into that, which is why maybe not all of this has been seen by everyone at this point, but me and you know, it happened. Uh, but like, it's, yeah, it's insane. It's insane to be like, I, I start, you know, the first year you go to hall of fame, right? It's like, yeah. what am I getting to do? What is this? Oh, look at the, this hotel's kind of crazy. Yeah. Some of the people are kind of crazy. The hotel. But, oh my God. Which, by <laughs> the way, bravo, Best Western, who now runs it. Because, I mean, the that's best, it. The best thing, honestly, that could have happened was the pandemic. Because they were able to shut the hotel down for that whole year. And not have to worry about really any guests coming anyway. So, it's like, oh, and not having it in 2020 was kind of a blessing in disguise. Because they were remodeling the event center and the hotel all together too and yeah now we have a nice hotel that has a bar with working air conditioning in it which is just fabulous oh, man and i didn't get to eat any last year i'm gonna make a point of it this year if it's still there but there's that barbecue joint in the bar yeah yep and i know that that dude hooked wes up with a cut of prime rib that i was like Mother- motherfucker give it to me like <laughs> sorry you can edit that i hope i uh i'm so used uh... to the two count i don't always censor myself everybody uh <laughs> But, like, yeah, I had to take it. My only gripe with the Hall of Fame Hotel is they did all these wonderful upgrades. And I'm sure you've seen what the pool area used to look like, what it looks like yeah. now, which is nothing. There is no pool. It's like arcade games and shit. Yeah. That is such an old school, cool layout for what could be an indoor pool yeah. and hot tub. And I'm kind of mad that they didn't put any money into doing that. You had the bones. Like it, it would be cool to be able to have like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't we throw a hotel, uh, a pool party part of the weekend? And right. Everyone's at that hotel. That would be such a cool addition to the weekend's events. Uh, but they don't have a pool anymore. So, well, I remember. Um, I remember for a lot of years, most of the time the pool was always closed. We'd always get there. Oh yeah, our pool's closed. And it's like Jesus, are you ever gonna fix? I, I do remember, (laughs) but the thing is, the first year, and maybe I'm just, maybe I'm sentimental about it. I don't know. The first year we went, it was open. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, you know, Wes, you've gotten to meet him. You've gotten to talk to him. You've gotten to chop it up with him over the years. Uh, You know, that was the first time I've ever met him. Right. And we were trying to get him to do the interview with the podcast. And, you know, Wes is not someone who does interviews he just doesn't mm-hmm. yeah we got like i think that first year he was there we got maybe like a short five ten minute interview with him like as we were all kind of walking out of the thing we had a little recorder there and we just yeah we got like a short five ten minute interview with him he just and, and i you know wes is his own guy it's just not something he's into he's always been that guy that if i want to do something like that i'm gonna just start my own show and then you know down the line that's what ends up happening but um we, we we kept asking like we we're like come on man he's like uh, I don't really want to you know and I was like it'd be really cool man and like finally we got him to say he would do it but like he said he was like I will only do it if we record it in the hot tub at the pool and we're having a couple beers and we're gonna sell it because at that time we weren't doing video right like video right, podcast yeah. it wasn't a thing yeah it was that wasn't a thing audio. man yeah. So he's like, and I'm going to sell it like we got a bunch of hot women with us. And like, it's just a, it's a party. We're having the best times of our lives. He's like, if you guys are willing to record it in the actual hot tub, I will do your show. <laughs> the next day, we spend 45 minutes in the hot tub with Wes Briscoe drinking beers <laughs> and just freaking around, man. Just playing around. And I, I had a blast. 
uh you know i had a co-host with me on that show and he just wasn't as good at making friends i guess as some people as other people uh so like wes and i really became buddies where they didn't uh and it just progressed into i get there one year the first night i i you know i hook up with wes we hang out him and i like to have our, our special powwows you know all about that and uh 10 minutes into the conversation in his room it's i want to start a podcast and you're the guy that's doing it and i was like what do you mean like you want me to record he's like no no, 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 no. i want you to record it but you're my co-host he's like i can't do it on my own you're my guy and it's been fucking over after that man uh to this day that's that's a brother to me right there that's that's homie uh we don't get to see each other a lot anymore either so the One. this is exciting times this week well, and even like back there for the last several years, a lot of the times because of how different uh, Greg's schedule was compared to mine, Hall of Fame weekend a lot of times was the only time we got to see each other too. Like we do yeah. the podcast all throughout the year, and some we maybe both get to go to Des Moines to, for a show together, but it's very few and far between because he seemed like he always worked weekends. But yeah. we always he always made a point to get that Hall of Fame weekend off. So a lot of times that was our weekend too to kind of throw it down together. And yeah, it's kind of wild man and you know speaking of Wes again let's start kind of going over some of the card that we got here next Saturday night for the and that's the interesting thing this year they're moving the wrestling show to Saturday night where the banquet is Friday which I find pretty interesting I was actually listening to um Tony Schiavone's podcast last this past week and he was saying obviously he's going to be in for the Hall of Fame ceremony Friday night and then apparently he has a 5 30 a.m flight that he has to hit on Saturday so he can make collision I'm like God damn, man, the life of a wrestling personality or a wrestling person, that that that's insane right there. Like you don't even really get to enjoy the rest of the of the weekend that you're there. You just Yeah, dude, it's 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 oh, man. I mean, and you know, uh just by doing what you're doing in Iowa right now, you know what I mean? Uh and I'm not even in Iowa, dude, and I'm I'm 42 now, Zach. Like so just just to drive that three, four hours one way. Well, for us, where we've been doing stuff, it's anywhere from two to four hours. So to do that one way, me and old top shelf there, it's like, dude, are we too damn old to be doing this? But then you get to the <laughs> show and it's, you get to, the, that's the other thing. What this has become is just one big, crazy wrestling family. Yep. Uh, yep. You know, I, I was talking to both of our, both of our friends, uh, just Saturday night about this, uh, Mr. Austin Bayless, and uh, you know we had a real good conversation about just how it's 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 a crazy thing when you go from one side of wrestling to then you, you it goes from going to watching and being fan of the business to then you're mm. on the other side of it, yeah, and then yep. you build this camaraderie, camaraderie. You know what I'm trying to say yeah. with the locker yep. room and with the people involved and and everything, and it just becomes this thing. Uh, that you no one will truly know until you're a part of it, yeah. of what it's like being involved in this this crazy business, uh, you know. But that's that's what Hall of Fame was for a long time for me. Is this is where I get to see the family? Yeah. Now yep. we're so freaking busy, <laughs> uh, and I see everybody every all the time now because of making shows and, and ring announcing that it's just. I'm not gonna lie. If I didn't go this year, it'd have been like, I don't feel like I'm missing out. I'm still seeing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the only one would be Wes. Uh, so, but I mean, yeah. And and Wes is a mainstay. Therefore, he's got to be on the show. Um, he, he, you know, he. I think he would probably take legitimate offense if he was never not booked for this 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 mm-hmm. show. Um, obviously, Dad Jerry is is the guy for this hall of fame weekend uh and just putting it together being head of the board all that good stuff so uh it's only right you got west down there uh and and to have this this uh match that we're gonna get the this legacy match of the briscoes and the andersons can't go wrong exactly you know i had uh brock anderson on here a couple weeks ago and that was really cool too he seemed pretty and for that because again you just think of the andersons and the briscoes and just the name that those the that family legacy brings to professional wrestling and the fact that you're getting that on a show like this that's pretty Mm -hmm. damn awesome too Uh, you know but call me crazy zach 
Call me crazy. It's going to be cool to see them square off. But two, two just legendary wrestling families, what if it just came together, right? I don't remember, and this is really bad. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, and I'm not calling it, so I'm going to rely on you, my, my friend, uh, who the IPW tag, champs, uh, tag ta- champs are right now. I believe they are Chilaleo because later on in the evening, we are remember we're having the IPW tag titles versus the Madhouse tag titles with Chilaleo versus okay. the Hale Twins. So there we go. So, uh, and that is a team that I know very well. Yep. I'm not gonna lie, I know both these teams very, very, very well. Uh, of course, Chilaleo, the very first, uh, yeah, very first yep. and only at this point two time Madhouse tag team wrestling champions, and again. The Hales, we just saw the Hales Saturday night here in Rochester put on a hell of a match with those damn Coyotes, which is not a team to take lightly in the Midwest. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be great action. But, Matt, could you imagine if you saw Brock Anderson team up with Wes Briscoe and they went on a title run together? That would be one of those things where I think the entire venue there in Waterloo would pop. Like we oh. know how big, how many, how many people typically come to that show. I think that place would come unglued. Oh, man, and you know, can't really. Uh, you know, it'd be cool, but they're in the match. But I mean, I'd love to see them beat up on Chill Leo. Good, good time. Oh, yep. But... When we see again, we've seen Chilaleo versus the Hale Twins before too. We know what kind of matchup those two teams can put on together. And again, yeah, you throw in that type of team. Again, we're we're spitballing here. As of now, it's supposed to be Brock Anderson versus Wes Briscoe. Yeah, again, it's gonna be in the seen, same age. We've match. seen anything and everything happen at the Hall of Fame. So uh, never know. Whenever whatever, whatever we're talking about tonight, take it as very much as card is subject to change. That's what you never I like know what's going to happen. Yeah, you never yeah. know what's going to happen at a show. And, you know, and I just seen – we might as well get into that tag match because we're talking about it. Uh, you know, like I just mentioned to you, I just seen uh, the Hale Twins in just a, a phenomenal match with those damn Coyotes. Um, but also that same night, I saw Max Chill in a banger with Ugly. I, both of them took some looks on that one. And then an absolutely, like, just – crazy good match our main event we had uh gable galileo taking on the dirt dog jimmy wild and let me tell you neither one of them came out of that match a hundred percent neither and both of them have big matches this saturday night in waterloo iowa big big matches so uh gable pulled out the win so he's also coming as the new madhouse uh wrestling champion but I, I don't know what those two have left. I don't know what the Hales twins have left because both of them were just involved in a crazy uh, uh, hard-hitting matches this past weekend. Uh, and again, Gable Gable came out ahead, new champion. The Hales retained. But you got to wonder, like, how are both these teams going to be feeling come uh, Saturday night? Yeah, like you had mentioned there, it's um, that's going to be really something interesting to look forward to as well and you know another match that i wanted to break down here with you real quick we saw this guy at the hall of fame ceremony a couple of years ago when we did the hall of fame classic tournament uh jeremy wyatt going up against ethan everhart you want to talk about a matchup that has potential for people to go away from it and say holy shit that was a match i think this one definitely has potential because i feel like anytime we book jeremy wyatt in a match that's what we walk away with Oh my gosh! I mean, what a stud, right? Just an absolute stud out of out of what Missouri, yep. St. Louis area, I believe. Hey, there ain't nobody better, and there ain't nobody better. And you, some of y'all may look at it and be like, "I ain't, listen to me. There ain't nobody better than that you would want to mess with. Like, leave Jeremy Wyatt alone. Otherwise, you're gonna be broke. Uh, he will break you. One of Ethan, the best technical wrestlers I've mm. seen. We saw, what was it? Was it was it him and Jossi that yep. we saw in a, yeah. just an absolute five star match? If, if you want, if you're interested it. in watching that match, head over to the Shotgun Wrestling Radio fa- uh, YouTube page. I uploaded that oh a while back from that yeah. Hall of Fame show. Check that out. Uh, just just phenomenal. But then you got Ethan Everhart, right? 
who I know in absolute pro wrestling has had a year uh, from last summer up until now. Former champ just recently dropped that this year, the my last month or two. Uh, got the hometown crowd with him, though, too. He is from the jungles of water, or yeah, the woods of Waterloo. So, I mean, that's always been a good factor for Ethan Everhart in a match uh, in Waterloo, is they show up for him. You know what I mean? That town shows up for him. Uh, and the kid's athletic. You can't take that away. Is he going to take it to Jeremy Wyatt? Absolutely. Who's going to win, though? I don't know. I'll tell you who I think. You want to know who I think? I think Absolutely. Jeremy gets it. I think Jeremy gets it, Zach. But you never know. Uh, yeah, it's going to be – that one's going to be just an absolute barn burner. And, if, again, if you're looking at all the matches we're talking about tonight, there's that one and here, one other one that I can think of that I think people are really just going to walk away from and just be wowed. But let's continue running down the card here. This next one I know had a lot of people kind of scratching their heads, kind of going, what in the world? So I'm curious to see where this goes. And we have the IPW Championship on the line as James Jeffries defends his title against Rock – riddle now y'all know rock he's one of the best dressed guys you see around all weekend i don't remember the last time this man's been in a ring but to go up against a guy like james jeffries oh boy that's if i'm rock i feel a little 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 nervous here i don't know we know right we know rock riddle is a talker Right, this man is a smooth talker, mm-hmm. and he must have talked his ass into this match because <laughs> I have no clue how we have a. And I hope he doesn't hear this because he may get offended. But like a seventy, eighty. How old is he? Yeah, something like that. It's you're right, a year old man in the ring with one of the greatest wrestlers to ever. Be in Iowa, James, especially Jeffries. in Waterloo, Iowa, which is like James's second hometown. It, it's I, I don't know what old man's thinking, and I I like Rock Riddle, I respect Rock Riddle, uh, but Rock, what are you doing, dude? Don't get in this match. This and, and I'll tell you will what, not too, end well. And I tell you what, too, man. Like, I just recently got done here yesterday watching the movie The Iron Claw. And I mm-hmm. feel like, because we know how much James loves the Van Erich family. James is a huge Von Erich, specifically Carrie. I feel like ever since he kind of even watched that, it kind of helped push him to that next motivation tactic just because of what that movie did. If you if guys haven't watched the movie yet, I highly recommend it. It was actually really damn good. I was really impressed. Well, and you know, and here's another thing too. James, uh, while still wrestling, has also really settled into his position as one of the head trainers for the vault. Uh, IPW school uh, and has a hand on most of the cards you're going to see at this show. I mean, he's mm-hmm. had a hand in these guys, you know, Jimmy Wild, Gable, uh, Ethan, Bryce Jordan, Ethan Everhart, you know, Chilaleo, the Hale yep. twins. These are people that have been trained yeah. and taught by this man. You know what I mean? My thing with this is also. We all know James Jeffries is one of the nicest men, women, anything. He's the nicest person in professional wrestling. You will not meet anyone nicer. This guy is a heart of gold. He is a saint. I don't see how he's going to... I mean, maybe this is where Rock gets his angle, but I feel like I feel like James is going to feel bad about beating up an old guy. <laughs> That's actually a very, very good point, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, very, very know. good. Crazy point. matchup, though. Crazy yeah. matchup. I'll tell you what. I don't know. I don't know what Troy was doing when he made this one. <laughs> like you said, I think Rock is definitely a smooth talker. That's for damn, mm-hmm. damn sure. So uh, another matter, match. He's got some something really good on on Troy. <laughs> <laughs> There's some good blackmail going on. Another matchup, my friend, that we got coming up here is a women's matchup. Laney Luck versus Miss oh. Frankie J. We have not seen much Laney Luck here with Impact Pro Wrestling. And, you know, I was talking to my brother DJ after this match was announced. He had seen her 
over with the promotion Dreamwave when he was in Chicago not that long ago, and he said she can really work. So I think Miss mm-hmm. Frankie J is gonna have have it out for. I think she's gonna have a tough con- contest here with this one because I've I've heard the name, I've seen her a few times, and yeah, I think Lainey Lux can be out for something to prove here. Yeah, I believe I've seen her up in the Twin Cities once or twice. Uh, but I know who she is. I've seen the work. Phenomenal. You just mentioned Dreamwave. Shout out to Dreamwave, another great promotion in the Midwest that has had just some absolute, you know, talent uh, uh, come through there and still are there. So uh, it's always exciting to see new, especially women's talent, because let's be honest, when we became fans, when we got you know, really be, you know, dedicated to, I'm a pro wrestling guy. This is what I love. This is what I'm going to watch. This is what I'm going to keep myself busy with. It was a whole different vibe for the women's side of things. You know what I mean? And we all know about the women's uh, revolution and then you have the evolution, pay for all that. And like now we're in this thing where women are taken way more serious and the matches are more legit. So that's why it's fun when we get to see some of these, these, these female talents that we don't always get to see and you see him live finally because some of these girls man a lot of these girls kick the shit out of these uh sorry again will kick the butt <laughs> out of some of these male talents man these guys in the locker room gotta watch out some of these girls are way tougher than them <laughs> and uh we're gonna find out about laney miss frankie J, a a mainstay legend yep. uh i told her that uh that she she is a legendary female wrestler from the state of iowa and she should be proud of that uh yeah, I mean, here's the deal. We could, we've we all seen the sweet side of Frankie J. We, that's there. But there's a way bigger mean streak in Frankie J. Uh, I've unfortunately been a, 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 a... I've had to deal with some of that before at some shows, so it's <laughs> not fun. Um, it's, you know, Frankie's worked with some of the best. We have know Laney's working some of the hottest talent right now, so it's it's going to be a match. It's going to be good, and it's good to see that we have like an actual dedicated women's match, but then we're also getting that tag match, a little mix up, being that little intergender mm-hmm. with the hails uh, versus versus Chilea. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a fan. I love when we can get the the ladies into the shows and get them in there do some stuff because some of these girls are doing some shit in the ring. Sorry, that is. <laughs> I should have asked before we started recording this, Zach. You're about totally, you're totally Sorry. good, buddy. You're totally good. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, some of these girls that I've seen, I mean, you've seen them, like, you know, I'm big Billy, Billy Starks fan. Big oh, yeah. Billy. Yep. seen her for the last four or five years that I've been watching her. It's just, it's a joy to see some of these, these women really getting their chances right now on this indie scene right now. I mean, because they're out there, man. Uh, and Lainey's one of them. So it's a tall task for Miss Frankie J, who is a lot more, probably probably quite a few more years in um so yeah and again it's um like you said we've seen the nice side of frankie and we've seen the tricky side of frankie so she's always got something up her sleeve and i think this match will be absolutely no different when it comes to saturday night again let's I'm all, i want to run down some uh information who for folks that might be leaning it and we got just about 10 minutes left here so i'm going to run down it pretty quickly my friend we got uh meet and greet starts at 6 p.m bell time is at 7 p.m uh rows three through five are 35 dollars general admission is 25 dollars another one that i want to talk about real quick here before we kind of wrap things up maddie star versus reese maddox who is the son of wwe referee jason ayers again maddie's another one dude that we can't have a hall of fame show without i feel like maddie's kind of always been there man let me tell you this like (sighs) maddie star i mean the role model and he's a role model for a a reason and this is one of those guys that i'll never figure out how it more didn't happen for him legendary heel one of the best in the state one of the best in the midwest nobody can draw heat and i mean this nobody can draw heat like maddie star now am i a fan of him at the moment no i'm not and i'm very much hoping he gets his butt whooped because at our last APW show. He got real handsy with a lace in the ring and it was not appreciated and he stretched my shirt out. So uh not a big fan of Maddie Star. I hope he loses. 
but I mean, you can't deny and you can't res- you can't not respect uh, that man for everything he's done in the Midwest wrestling wise. And mm-hmm. I'm excited. I don't know much about the kid he's wrestling. I don't. I'm excited to yeah. see this. It's uh, been- I think I've heard this was a request by Maddie. One well, would make sense because I know Maddie has been friends with Jason for a long time. Reese has been training here for I think just under a year from what we talked about in our conversation just a few weeks ago uh go over to the playlist on our youtube page to check out that episode and yeah it's gonna be interesting you know to make your iowa wrestling debut on a show like this when you're 20 years or younger that's a lot of a guy against a guy like maddie that's pressure man yeah because not only like are you not only are you gonna be nervous about your match in ring which by the way he shouldn't be because you got one of the best in there to take care of you. But the other, but the other thing is, it's like you know, Maddie draws so much heat that mm-hmm. while it's almost like instant, he's gonna be the he'll get the pop he needs. But it's also like, but I gotta I gotta deliver for them. You know what I mean for the fans? Because again, Maddie's nobody likes him. Nobody. Do you like him? No, I respect he, he's him. A, he's a jerk. <laughs> he is a jerk. So, yeah, uh, I hope the kid gets a good one on him. But the thing is, and I'll say this until I'm blue in the face, the one thing that Maddie had, two things, sorry, is uh, that veteran mind and the the trick up the sleeve. There is not one match Maddie Starr has ever gone into without having a plan A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. And that's what this kid's got to be worried about. Yeah, we got one more match to talk about here quick as our time is counting down, my friend. That's this is like a a it's going to show, I guess, as you were mentioning James training earlier. This is kind of like a showcase of what's come out of the vault. And I'm talking about Jimmy Wild, Bryce Jordan. I mean, these two are gonna throw the hammer down. I'm super amped for this one too. I think the I think this one's gonna get the crowd really rocking and roaring. I mean, it's funny. I, I so we just ran a show madhouse here in Rochester, Minnesota, where I'm located this last weekend. So it's one of the few times my friends, my family who have known me almost all 42 years of my life can come see the, cause I don't know if you get this from any of your friends and family, Zach, but I would always get like, what is all this wrestling stuff we see you doing on the weekends? Where are you going? Who are these people? What are these shows? So like to do one at home and they get to come and be a part of it and experience it. It's such a great, uh, great feeling, but it was funny. I had a couple people Saturday night, see Jimmy come out for the main event. And I was already out of the ring after we did introductions. And so that, that guy has the the belt on. I'm like, just wait, just wait. (laughs) And by the end of the match, they're like, oh, man, we get it. He's so good. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, and the same with Gable. Again, uh, they had a great match. But Jimmy is that guy that has zero fear. And I mean that. I I mean, if you don't tell him he can't do something, he will do it. Like, that's why we got to be careful sometimes and be like, hey, man, there's certain things you're going to see out there. Don't climb it. Don't jump off it. We don't need to kill your guy in there in the ring. You know what I mean? And so, like, yeah, Dirt Dog, Jimmy Wild is a force to be reckoned with. But here's the thing. A lot of history there, right? The Golden God, Bryce Jordan. I am indifferent. I have no no, no, no hate, no love for this man. It's a big debate on the two count, though. You know this. Um, AR loves him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. Uh I know we're recording this right now, but just so you know, watch the show tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 a crazy thing, but but Bry- Bryce is another guy that took to this so well, right? Moves in the ring so well. He had a great run as IPW champion. Uh, he's done amazing things with his partner from Du Bois, Bryce the Shank Eubanks. Uh, he again just had a great match with five other guys uh, for us this weekend, and you know, again, maybe Jr. and him have a little bit of a of an issue with each other, and you know, maybe Jr. got some revenge this weekend. Uh, if you want to see that, check out the two count. You'll you'll see what we're talking about. Um, you're not going to want to miss it, Zach. You're going to love it. <laughs> uh, but I mean, Jr. even says it. You cannot. 
take away that man's talent and skill, even if I hate him. And it's true. Bryce has got so much talent. The future for both of these guys is big. And you're going to see some young, hungry dudes, right? Saturday night, giving it all they got. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome time Saturday night. The whole festivities kick off here Thursday with the introduction and the, the whole thing at the museum. And then 8 o'clock at night is the um, trivia, which is always a lot of fun. And, I mean, trivia feels like just one big reunion because everybody's in the hotel bar. We're just having an absolute blast. And yeah, It's I can't really wait, just man. a big hang with some trivia and all. Yeah. Like, really, exactly, that's what exactly. it is. You know what I mean? It's such so, a good time. But um, hey, that's gonna that's gonna about do it for us here, man. My countdown says about like two minutes left here, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here for us. And if please remember, go to uh, Twitch t- Twitch TV, search the two count. You will find their show that airs every Tuesday night. So if you're listening to this on Tuesday tonight at 7 p.m. Go check out our friends at the two count. They always have a blast over there with their show. Big A's, my man. I will see you in Waterloo. We hope to see the rest of you in Waterloo. Cause this might be my last show for a while. Cause I might be taking a little bit of a break from doing the show. Cause I've been hauling my ass lately. So I'm like, I might just take a little R and R time from doing the show here for a while and just kick back and play some college football. So, but guys, until next time, we'll see you right here on the world wide web.